and we are still waiting for Joel. He has some issues. Uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, the wonderful world of Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, wait, there, yeah. Now. No, I, yeah, 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 yeah. What was it? <laughs> it was a, it was Skype. So let's okay. see. Skype. Um, oh yeah, we welcome to do an to... update. Yeah. Welcome to the new year of 2024. Um, I'm wonderful. happy to join you guys in 1999 for a little bit of time, and I'm happy to do this for yeah, you yeah. to use <laughs> Skype. This was the wonderful but, world of Microsoft. <laughs> you know yeah. the thing, so, Joel? Skype has an NDI function that allows for every voice track, voice uh, sound track to be mm -hmm. in a different bar. That is... Yeah. Mm. I can see the end result on the live stream. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, Joel, I'm sure. Um, uh, yes. Happy New Year to you too, and congratulations on 15 years of Bitcoin. Yes, congratulations. 15 yeah. years. And how many years are you on, on, on living on the crypto now? Living on crypto is over eight. Uh, okay. And using crypto is over 10. Oh, okay. And yeah. knowing about and talking about Bitcoin and all the others is like 11, probably. Oh, okay. So long time. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I, you have been so active in the last month. Uh, I'm talking about Twitter. <laughs> every time when I join Twitter, yes, every time when I come on Twitter, you are in some, uh, what's the name of that on, on X? Some Arch space. Street. Yes. Some space talking. And, mm -hmm. uh, how 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 is that going for you? What have you been doing? What have you discovered over the last uh, couple of weeks? Well, and by the way, I, I think... really enjoy your comments on the Bitcoin bashing. I try to like all of them. <laughs> of course, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed it's been a very um, there's a there's a reason why um, the crypto world is really gravitated towards. What was known as Twitter, and I think recently, ever since the change in ownership, um, it's re it's kind of become a much more friendly platform for these kinds of things, much more open source in some aspects. Sure. Yeah, and so it's, I think that just like we're early adopters, we're pioneers. Um, it helps to to pioneer on pioneering kind of things, and so I found it's like. So, for example, I did a podcast over the weekend, and or and it got around 500 views on YouTube, and it was like almost 6,000 views on Twitter. Wow. And so just oh. broadcast to get there, it gets a lot more because yeah. people are already there. They don't have to click a link to get off there. And so I think it's kind of a, an interesting contrast because I'm also on Noster, and um, I wish I was not. <laughs> it's so far a huge waste of time. No offense to the people that work very hard to make it happen, but it's kind of interesting of the contrast between the real world and then certain people trying to sort of, you know, centrally plan what things we should and shouldn't do and say, oh, this is this is the real cypherpunk place to be. And it's work and it doesn't it, it's trash. It doesn't work well at all. Yeah, I also since a month or so, there is really a little over. I I don't want to give Alex Jones too much credit, but it was around that time when when uh, I got really motivated to speak out again, and 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 I've made a new video series, the Go Fuck Yourself video series. You know that uh, because it was Elon Musk's comment that said, "Let the market decide which place is best," and I was like, "Well, let's give X a go," because I wasn't really active there before. And the more that I use it, the more that I like it because it's much more direct. Basically, everybody is there just commenting on each other without censorship. You cannot just click a button to get somebody blocked or something. And um, yeah, I, I I use it more and more. And uh, for me, it's it's much more open debate than any other place. And especially the community notes is something that I really enjoy. Uh, over 
the fact checkers on Facebook. I mean, before I was more active on Facebook and I'm thinking, what have I been doing there for all these years, man? It's a terrible place. Yeah, absolutely. But, and I do, I'm part of the um, community notes program and Twitter, okay. so I do like rate notes, things like that. It's always interesting. It's, it's kind of reminds me of like old school Wikipedia before it got taken over <laughs> by centralized things in that it's yeah. like anyone can edit notes and things. And, it, one thing is, it's funny to see Elon Musk get community noted because he owns the whole thing and he says something and people are like, that's not actually true. And they put a little thing on his, <laughs> on his thing. So yeah. if he lets that happen, then it must, he must have at least some kind of a commitment to free speech, which is better than everyone else so far. Yeah, I think he's doing a great job. He's getting a lot of pushback also. If you see the fake news now trying to bash on X, you know, and how he is, oh, the, the value of X went down. Yeah? He's not selling at any moment, you know, give it a couple of years and see what's happening with it. But uh, it's, it's really developing into something uh, very powerful because the, the way how people can talk, the free speech that is allowed. I, I'm, I made a video to announce this stream yesterday that I made for YouTube. And I just openly said, well, people don't expect any information in this video because it's made for YouTube. So I'm self-censoring my, myself to not lose my channel. Mm -hmm. And um, before there wasn't really a place that you could uh, uh, say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shit. Wait a Long word, short word. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> word. This is a compare. That's it. Compare. You couldn't really okay. compare mm -hmm. anything because there wasn't a X like that. So now that there is a X, uh, it becomes much more obvious how limited your speech already is on, for example, a a, a Facebook or something. You know? So mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm really excited about uh, the upcoming year because I think once we do get more free speech and and information is shared more openly there is going to be a flood of information that yeah can really influence the way how people see reality you know they, they are losing control of our information stream in a way yeah and even more i think um it's it's part of a major shift in i guess like the free market narrative where this is going to be something people will study for a very long time i think which is so. When in the beginning, people created social media networks. They created all kinds of things. In order to get people to use them, they had to be free to use. No one could, they could not charge money for them. And the, you can't make a, a profitable company not charging money. So then they basically have advertisers as the actual paying customers. And yeah. so that created an improper dynamic where the user, the end user was a farm animal and not an actual valued customer. And they kept on abusing the end user censoring and uh, collecting data and feeding all that to advertisers and yeah. pretty much every abuse. I mean, we could go into conspiratorial things and say, oh, it's all the people, the, the political left took mm -hmm. over this or pressure from government and all this kind of stuff, all of which is true, by the way. But the biggest thing is to follow the money. The money yeah. is the advertisers. And they don't want their products associated. They don't want Alex Jones <laughs> posting something crazy on Facebook. And then their ad shows up there. Like, oh, like they don't want that. That's exactly and, what yeah. happened when I was working for local radio. And we had uh, advertisers. Mm -hmm. And they, they they started to tell us what we uh, could say or could, could not say. Or what music we could play or not play. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah exactly. continue. Yeah. And so because of that. We ended up in this situ in this bad situation, and the biggest thing, the hardest thing Elon Musk is doing is not making a, a, a relatively uncensored platform. That's second hardest. The hardest thing is completely changing the the model. Like, how the hell did he get anyone to pay for Twitter? Like, I'm paying. Well, I like wish I could pay, but he's only accepting credit cards, so I, I I'm not. Yes, there's a few. Crypto workaround. It's so. coming. It's coming. It's coming. He said it would be a half mm -hmm. around in, in about six months' time. He said so. Do you use a crypto debit card then? Or, or, uh... Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, but... 
you have to be a U.S. citizen for us to get one of those. I've not been able to get one of those. For some. There's one that BitRefill is coming out with for European ah, users only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with that, I am not in the EU. I am in Serbia. And Serbia doesn't allow even for Amazon cards, for example. So mm. I, I have a difficult jurisdiction. And in a way, I just accept it. I'm sure that if I would do more... Uh, research on it that in some way i could pay for my twitter account but well i i do i mean one easy way i won't say easy but is through a proxy right because i do know that you can use the same card to pay for multiple accounts and it's so what you could do is someone who already has an account you could just say can i pay you some crypto and i and then can you pay for my twitter account? yeah yeah, yeah. And then uh, there you well go. Joel, i have like, got some days why is this person <laughs> yeah, why is this person logging in in Serbia all the time? Oh. <laughs> VPN. Let's be the VPN. <laughs> if you want to learn some I want to watch that Serbian series on Netflix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, Joel, yeah. what would you like to talk about? What What is it that's, uh, that's, that, that is keeping you awake at night? Well, to finish the Elon Musk thought, because mm -hmm. uh, that whole moving of the model back to a Customer gets value, customer pays. It's okay to pay a small fee for a good service. Um, I think that that's a good way to sort of push everyone into crypto in mass adoption because it's a mindset change from when you have a bank account, again, you know, so I'm told, there's all kinds of hidden fees, but no one says, all right, you got to pay five cents to send your money. Like, no, they, it's all free, but then you have to have a certain limit. And then there, it's like the real customer is like the people that they loan your money out to. And it's just all this, this weird relationship. And so when people say, why do I have to pay two cents to send my, oh, I got to pay a little bit of cement. I hate this. This is stupid. Yeah. It's just because they, they've been lied to for so long. But once uh -huh. you start to get better, all the, once people start to make the connection that all the best services are cheap, but they pay a little bit for it. Then people would be like, all right, this I understand. I don't mind paying a little bit to send my money around. It's better than I know that Venmo is going to be terrible somehow, even though it's free or whatever. I don't even know if it's free, but that's going to be a big shift. And I'm really excited for that. So you that's know, one since, since the 1st of January of this year, Dutch people have to pay every time they take cash out of the ATM. And people are wow. going crazy over it. I, I should be able to use my own money and blah, blah, blah. Well, the, the, what about all those hidden costs that you haven't been paying attention to for all these years? But as soon as, as that kind of fee is introduced, the people are, well, uh, are going wild. They're for all the taxes they have to pay. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the killing yeah. of, uh, of a few uh, children in uh, Syria with Dutch bombs. <laughs> well, it was paid for uh, with our taxes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, the real thing about like the customer choice type thing. It's also a dangerous mentality to the state because once you start getting that, then people say, oh, everything's free. Like healthcare is free. Everything's free. But then you pay a ton of money and someone else pay. It's all this like, you know all the smoke and mirrors all this shuffling shell game like oh look it's here no it's not there and i think people are starting to realize that and i think the powers that be are very afraid of a world where people just say i want this i'm going to pay for it i don't want this i'm not going to pay for it and that's what yeah. they're really really worried about yeah, yeah agree uh, by the way what uh, because your uh, last time you spoke you were uh, or a few Times before you were uh, on Dash, you were the Dash guy. Are you still uh, mm -hmm. very much into Dash? Or well, yes, but to be specific, I worked full time in Dash until 2019, mm -hmm. and then I did my own, my own podcast things like that. But as of I guess yesterday, I'm back working full time with Dash now. Okay, I think, and I made a a big post on mm -hmm. Twitter on X about it, but basically. I've been thinking a lot of time, a lot over these last few years because I want, like, I use crypto. I know a few other people that like don't use banks at all that live all on crypto all over the world, mm -hmm. and there's, I know it's possible, but I, there's very few people that do it, 
It's very rare. And how many, Joel, have you met? I so I personally know and have talked to, and I, I put out a video. It's also pinned on my Twitter profile at the top of like at least six other people. Mm. And then I know of two or three others friends who didn't want to be on camera. And then I've heard legend of some other people. Mm. Um, so wow. um so like, we are with a very small minority yeah. well that that's just people i know and there's yeah. there's always people claiming oh yeah i do this oh yeah i do that most of the people that claim this or or if they claim to live on bitcoin specifically there's they're, they're mostly what they mean is they they have a bank account and they, they bought a lot of bitcoin and they sell some when they need it but it's yeah. not like not for real I've, I found that out the hard way. And in, I think 2019, when uh, the, they said a news crew to film, like me running around using crypto around, you know, locally, um, I asked the reporter, I said, why, like, how did you find, basically, how did you find out about me? And he said, well, I just was like Googling, like people living on crypto. And there was two people and one of them was some Bitcoin guy in California. And one was like you out in New Hampshire. And pretty quickly, I realized the Bitcoin guy was full of shit. <laughs> basically, <laughs> well, basically, he just bought Bitcoin and he just like sold some. He didn't yeah, actually yeah. use it. And so it's kind of one of those situations. But so my epiphany, my idea is like, I think that especially right now with, with everything that's going on with Bitcoin, where it's getting mainstream institutional adoption or hopefully or whatever at the same time as it is really difficult to use as free as i call it as freedom money and mm -hmm. it's it's everyone you know post block size war or whatever knows that it became much more difficult after 2016 2017 but it was still possible if you paid like one or two dollars for a fee you could still buy your three dollar coffee or you know you could do you could get by you could figure it out um some lightning wallets started to work actually pretty well as long as the fees were low things like that it was it wasn't good, but it, you could pretend like you could LARP, right? Live action role play. You could pretend to be into this stuff. Not anymore. That's done. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the early uh, digital cash projects, whether it's you have Dash, Bitcoin Cash, now you have eCash, Nano, Monero, Zcash, Litecoin even. Litecoin is actually doing pretty well in terms of transaction volume. But still, all these coins are like largely the market has moved on they all have strong communities people still use them but the market is just like well let's work on this cross chain blah 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 this connect there's all this other some of it is very good stuff by the way but there's people forgot digital cash they just don't do that anymore uh -huh. and i think that's a huge problem and so i i looked around i, I thought about it and I thought, well, first of all, why is that a problem? Like, like why did that happen? And my conclusion, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, but my biggest conclusion is that people like me haven't done enough. Like, we talk, oh, yeah, go on a podcast here, talk about it there. Every once in a while, there's a friend. But, like, you remember the early days of Bitcoin when everyone was, like, a really, like a religious zealot, like, can I tell you about my Lord and Savior Satoshi Nakamoto here? <laughs> Download this wallet. Like everyone was was aggressively pushing that and saying, oh, freedom money, you get to use this. Over the years, that spirit died away. And it just became, you know, the the Bitcoin people became about number go up. The digital cash people kind of got, I don't know, they got distracted or they they talk about their thing, but they they lost the energy. Mm -hmm. And so then I thought, well, what am I going to use? Like, how am I going to promote this to people? And uh, whenever I use, every single time I, I know anyone who's used Dash the way it's meant to be used, it just works. Simple, everything works. Instant, you know, the, the wallet is a really, the main wallet is a really good user experience, everything like that. Mm -hmm. And every time I use something else, um, there's, usually pretty good but it still feels more like 2016 2017 like it feels it feels like you know it, it it works but then once in a while you're stuck with like a 10 minute 20 minute confirmation mm -hmm. or like you know there's some things like that or it's so i figure if i can't 
get anyone to use this stuff. We have much, I uh, like, we have much bigger problems. Like this is the easiest thing I can get people to onboard with. If like, let's just say the whole world starts using dash, not tomorrow, but within two years or something like that. If that's it, that's good for everyone because it kind of paves the way for people to be like, well, well, if this one here has these features and that thing, but it's just like this. And then people might try that out, one out too. It, it kind of moves everything forward. But I think that, um, like, for example, Bitcoin maximists have lost, lost a lot of public goodwill by pushing things like lightning that don't really work where people, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, there's a, there's a crazy fee, there's a failed payment, and then they have no help. It's just, Gaslighting. Oh no, it works for me. You just gonna you lose your Bitcoin. It's also possible. Huh? In first, in, in first yes. place, trying to set up your own Lightning. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you yeah. tried it. Yeah. You, you, I, I read mm -hmm. one time on on X that you uh, that you tried to uh, set up a wallet. And uh, how long did it took? Oh, uh, a couple months or six weeks, maybe or something. <laughs> okay. There was a lot of errors, and um, it and like what. The, the big lie people have been telling about Lightning isn't that it works, because it does work for what it does. It's just a, is an infrastructure, it's a settlement infrastructure system. And so mm -hmm. if you run a Lightning node, that's like a, an exchange or something should be running a Lightning node. That individual should never be running a Lightning node. It's just, okay. unless they really want to. It's like, you're, <clears throat> it's like you're bootstrapping your own server or something. Like individuals should never be touching that kind of thing. <laughs> and it works much more efficiently with large, like uh, large parties moving money back and forth constantly from each other, and then being yeah. able to maintain updated channel channel balance and stuff. But for individuals trying to do individual things, it just doesn't work very well. And I think that um, someone knew this. Right? I don't think all Lightning advocates understood this right away. Even those who used it, it took a while for them to figure it out. But someone understood this and like all that goodwill of like, oh, just use Bitcoin, look how easy. And then it goes away. And, you know, the same thing happens sometimes when if you try to say like, oh, why don't you like, just pick a random thing? Why don't you use Monero? OK, it works a lot easier. But then I send you some Monero and then you have to wait six or something blocks before you can send that to then someone else. And if you run into that experience as a new person, you're just like, yeah. all right, why can't I send my money? Then, oh, it's like, well, yeah. let them use Monero once they've figured out Dash really well. And then they're like, I want to try, I want to play with a different one. Try this one. And then if, it, if it's not as easy to use, they're, they already are, are a veteran. You know, they already know how to do it. So that's basically it. I'm going to try my best to get as many people using crypto as possible and see where that goes. I think um, people do this with, um companies right you have a new app you have a new service you find a way to get people to pay you money <laughs> to use your product and that's why and i'm somehow... holding back on my premium account on x i'm like let him yeah. accept some crypto and then i will get a premium account you know yes exactly so i just i think that if people can sell regular products and apps and things if companies can be successful then cryptocurrency projects, if they approach it like a company, in that we have metrics to track users, and then we, well, not on the chain, by the way, but we say like, okay, well, this many people using this wallet, this many people signing up to use BitRefill or whatever, there's there's certain metrics you can do. I think that you could, you could grow it like a company and say like, this is how much we spent on this much at user acquisition, and once you figure out a formula, you know, this free market stuff, right? You figure out a formula, then you can actually grow the whole thing. So that's why I'm, that's my project for the next year or two or so. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna pay my coffee with Dash next time. Uh, nice. Where can you pay coffee with Dash? Here, around the corner. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. If, if I live somewhere long enough, you can pay around me with yeah. with cryptos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my my <laughs> problem. Good. My problem was uh, I was using um, ordering food uh, with uh, with crypto a long time. There was uh, yeah, it was Thais or I think the English name is Deliveroo or something. Yeah, I think uh, with an orange uh, logo. Uh, and in in the, the English one or the, in the English speaking country, you can actually pay with crypto. It's 
uh, all, all kinds of cryptos, not not just Bitcoin, but uh, any other ones. But uh, and then the, <clears throat> the Dutch fund Thuisbezorgd was for a long time I could pay with uh, with Bitcoin Cash. I think Dash wasn't there, uh, and, uh, but I think in Litecoin, Litecoin, Litecoin was yeah, exactly. Litecoin and some others, uh, and Bitcoin <laughs> BTC of course. <laughs> But then they mm-hmm. changed. Uh, it was during the lockdown. I was ordering a lot of pizzas with Bitcoin Cash, and then suddenly I couldn't. Uh, mm-hmm. And they, I had, I could only use one app. Uh, before that, I could could use any app. And then as it said, only Bitcoin or Bitcoin Lightning. Yeah. So Very sad. I, I said an angry uh, letter was on, on on Twitter, but was uh, back then it was Twitter, and mm-hmm. I said, uh, "Why can't I do it?" Yeah, it's our policy. Uh, and uh, no, long, long conversations, but uh, they want to. They didn't want to uh, change it. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and there mm-hmm. is. So, so they lost a the customer. Of... <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of companies I know that did things like that, where they they accepted Bitcoin and then Bitcoin started to have some issues and then they accepted other coins. Uh, and then when Lightning came around, they bought the lie. They said, okay, well, uh, we'll clean up all the shit coins. We'll just do this. Yes, and it'll yes, work. Yes, yes, and then it just yeah. didn't work because they were lied to. You know, yeah, it didn't yeah, work because yeah. they were lied to. And now they lost a customer. And that's one thing I I really like, you know, about BitRefill is um I know Sergey, the guy who runs it. He's a great dude. Uh, he's always been a little bit of a, a Bitcoin. I wouldn't say a maximalist, but close. He's always been much more into that and a big lightning guy. But he's always been honest and he's always been into the free market where, oh, people are paying. Like they added Dogecoin as a joke one one year. And okay. enough people kept paying with Dogecoin that he just left the option on there yeah. because he's like, people are paying. I can't. I don't care if it's a shit coin. I I do what works. Yeah. There is also Dash, yeah, I think. Because I mm-hmm. think I use Dash for refill, I think. Yeah. 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 It, and it's funny because I had some Litecoin a few months ago and I used Litecoin on Bit Refill. Yeah, yeah. And I forgot, I just I forgot that you need to wait for confirmations. And it's only two and a half minutes, but it still <laughs> was like I was ready to pay my bill and I'm just sitting around. It's like, oh shit, this sucks. <laughs> I'm so spoiled. I'm so used to it just working, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the dash is really, uh, I don't know, I, uh, I, did, I, I didn't I only use it for a few times, but is it really faster than the Bitcoin Cash? Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. I, I know a... Bitcoin Cash sometimes have this uh, confirmation issues that you have to wait a long time. Uh, yeah, a well, there's, yeah. there's a, a special function that uh, instantly settles all transactions. And okay. so rather than, you know, rather than unconfirmed, but probably secure enough, it's like, no, you could send it to, you could send like a million dollars to an exchange mm-hmm. and instantly it should be ready. And of course, part of my job now is to contact every single exchange and things like that and tell them that and be like, uh, listen, like show them the documents. And, uh, that, that's a, the kind of thing that I think that uh, every single project will do something like it. Like eCash, where the fork of Bitcoin Cash, uh, where uh, Amari, uh, he started to look into Avalanche pre-consensus to like basically do another like a more secure instant experience too. Uh, obviously, Nano, I don't know if you know too much about Nano, but that has its confirmations. Um, a lot of modern blockchains have very quick block times, like a few seconds, which is not quite instant, but it's still there. Uh, the whole um, the whole experience of like waiting, I think, is like people are going to start to to remember that about like Bitcoin and Ethereum and things. They're not going to. It's not going to be the the future where people do that. I don't think so. Oh, is that a familiar face there? Somebody is uh, joining. I try to block people together that kind of know each other. So hey, hey, hey Callisti. Um, so to really quick give a rundown on how I fix the Skype problem. So I use oh, Linux. Yeah. Maybe Skype on Linux does not like it. Listen, it's terrible. So uh, um, I tried to do this in the web browser of Brave and then it 
the audio didn't work. And so finally I, I opened up Firefox and this is in Firefox in the web browser. And so uh, oh, no, what the problem was. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. So that's if Callisti could hear me, <laughs> maybe try that. Just save yourself some time and try that. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably because uh, you have to. Um, oh, I don't know how to tell it in English, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it automatically blocks a lot of uh, scripts, and you have mm -hmm. to manually, uh, yeah, unblock them. Unblock them. <laughs> I think that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. We don't hear well, you yet, Kalisti. In case you can hear us, maybe you can type in a message. In the... I do it. Hello. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, there he is. There he is. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Yeah, what's up? Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Not too bad. I'm exhausted. I'm uh, hmm. forgot the uh, zapping today. Look at the time. I was like, oh shoot, I'm pretty sure this is about to come up. <laughs> well, we're glad you're yeah. here. Uh, and uh, for both of you, because I don't think I've said it yet, congratulations on 15 years of Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, uh. Well, the time flies. Especially when you're having fun. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. When you're having fun staying poor, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anytime I hear that now, I just say, is that because of the transaction fees? Because that will make you poor. <laughs> it will, especially right. if you actually use it. You know? Well, also, that's, a, that's another thing. I, I Because you're not supposed to use it anymore, but one thing that people do recommend is dollar cost averaging where you buy us like on regular intervals. And the problem is if you have to spend a $25 transaction fee every time you, you buy, then that adds up to like, if yeah. you do that every paycheck, let's say every two weeks, that's like 24, what's 24 times 20, well, 24 squared, right? That's a lot of money you just spent just withdrawing every two weeks. Yeah. But then they say, oh, don't withdraw every two weeks. Wait till you have a big amount to withdraw and say, okay, well, now we're doing custodial shit. You know, yeah. What the hell is this? Yeah. So those fees will, they have an impact. Uh, Absolutely. I don't especially... know. I, I have used the Bitcoin since, I don't know, 2018, I think. <laughs> I, I bought on exchange just to sell and buy on the exchange, but not uh, for real. Uh, since then, I'm in Bitcoin Cash and on the other uh, altcoin. Uh, yeah, sometimes I do with a wrap Bitcoin, but, uh, just to buy it because I expect to go, go it higher against Ethereum or another uh, coin. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also live a bankless life. It doesn't mean I'm not using any debt currencies uh, because, well, it's... I live in the jungle in a way, so I'm, uh, you know, it's it's difficult. And in Serbia, there is a lot of uh, regulation about digital transactions, and it's not as easy as in America, for example, mm -hmm. because they just block a lot of services, and they, they many of these, for example, I don't think bit refill is accepted in uh, in Serbia, and because the user base of Serbians is just very small. It's not worth the price of going through all the regulation to uh, to offer that. So, uh, but if I pay uh, for, you know, I have a couple of places that uh, know me now for a couple of years and I keep on pushing that I, I, I like to pay with crypto to these people because I know that over time, most likely they are going to make some money on that, you know, and uh, I want to have to. I want them to experience that that there is a different form of money that exists. So if I pay, then over the last couple of years, I've been mostly using Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin for that. And so, um, yeah, it's working for me, you know. And uh, I, I, the 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 message of today that I want to send out with this uh, broadcast that we are doing is that we have to come to the understanding that our communities of all these coins are incredibly small, including Bitcoin in a way. There isn't uh, many people that use it yet. And, and somehow we need to connect to 
the normal people, let's call it like that, and and try to onboard them into crypto with uh, not only a good user experience, but I like to call it a spiritual war that I'm fighting and, and try to show them that you become a better person by using something different than that debt currency, because that debt currency is financing so many things that we, well, probably don't really support, you know, all these wars that are happening require our trust in, in that fine, uh, traditional finance. Not, not just the wars, but the new debate, the headquarter for the FBI. <laughs> yeah, all these things. And so uh, it's a very complicated uh, conversation that you cannot just explain in five minutes why I prefer it like that, you know, and uh, it takes every single user that I manage to add takes me weeks before I get there for them to really understand why and how and but I, I keep on doing it and uh, you know Bitcoin has allowed me to live uh, without a job now for 10 years in a way you know I don't have an income um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I see that as my job, and I'm. I'm. I'm excited to meet a new person and talk with them about it and uh, show the passion in a way. But yeah, it's. Uh, it's. It's difficult sometimes, especially if you go, for example, in the in the Netherlands to to people that are completely out of it and they have been so brainwashed by fake news. And you tell them about Bitcoin or crypto, and then you are just uh, the devil's child, you know, because, oh, it's digital money. Terrible. I don't want to be depending on the internet because they're going to shut me out one day. Or, Johan. Yeah, we have also a new guest, by the way. Yeah, Kalisti, he already said hi. Yeah. And I want to ask you, you want to uh, join with camera or without camera? Uh, let me uh, roll up out of bed and. Oh, I, I, we understand. <laughs> make myself <laughs> presentable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then no, then, uh, then because then I don't have to uh, put you in an. Uh, I, I use I don't, if you don't know you use NDI to uh, put your uh, image somewhere so the streamers can see you. But if you want to be. Uh, yeah. You don't have to show your face, Kalisti, yeah, if you prefer not. If you, if you just want to lay in bed, it's also yeah. good. They're invisible for the street, for the people, for the audience. Yeah. But we can hear you. And uh, Joel, a question that I yes. ask all the guests that are on today: How do you see a, a little bit outside of crypto, more in general? What do you think is going to happen in 2024? How do you see the outcome of uh, of the world? Let's call oh, it. God. I don't want to think about that, that honestly mm. at all. <laughs> well. For the record, you are located in New Hampshire, right? Yes, I am. Not not far from Red Calisti, but so you are vote. Uh, you your country is voting this year. Yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be fun. Um, <laughs> well, what my perspective is is on the whole, the trajectory of the human race has been good. Has been up despite some very bad things over the last few hundred years. And I think it will continue to, to go up. Um, what we are experiencing now is a, a an era of rapid change. And so that's a lot of opportunity for good things, and there's a lot of, of unfortunate things that have to happen in the interim. So basically, I think we're going to be okay. But this could be a crazy year. So. My perspective, so for example, um, he sh who shall not be named the <laughs> presidential front runner in the US right now, has already been, his eligibility to run for office has been challenged on it by two different states already. Yeah. And so my reaction to that was very positive, <laughs> not because I think it's a good thing, but because like yes dismantle the system <laughs> like <laughs> because up until so like i've been my previous work before crypto was in politics and so i remember pretty much every election since every election of this this millennia right since 2000 i remember all of them you know kind of on the 
hey jeremy um i kind of remember all of them and there was a, some of this might be my own i guess red pilling over the years but i have noticed the trust in the system is degrading and it wasn't until 2016 that it became very apparent that it, the losing side of that election became extremely hostile and not just ah oh, we don't like them but like this this person is an is a threat to everything we hold dear and well, then in 2020 when we had the passing of the of the a different administration the previous <laughs> group now view that as extremely illegitimate oh there's election fraud there's they stole this and you know all this kind of stuff and now it's like it's breaking apart a little bit like it, it's kind of interesting where, where you have things like things like police brutality that that was only something that people on the left thought was a thing and then when you have um, a few like protesters of the political right there's videos of them getting you know attacked by police and things like that all of a sudden that perspective changed all of a sudden it's not it is still mostly oh pro police but it's not it it's now like abolish the fbi as well as pro police. so it, it's a little schizophrenic still but it's it's shifting so there's uh, there have been a few in my also in maybe I, my perspective on the current U.S. administration, like I can't believe, uh, part of me almost thinks, why hasn't another country invaded the U.S. by now? Like the si the the amount of weakness being displayed, it it does appear. The whole world knows that the current president of the United States is not capable of running a McDonald's right now. <laughs> like everyone knows this. Everyone knows, and I'm not like this is in the political commentary here because. There have been lots of presidents that have been like, I would not have said that about Obama. I thought that he was very capable of making all the wrong choices in running a country, but at least he was at least he was capable, right? This this is a he could have elder... he, he did worse in ten countries in the same time. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but this it is very clear that the person who's supposed to be running the country mm. is absolutely not running the country. It's clear that it's a bunch of other people who are doing it. And everyone knows it, and some people pretend that's not the case. And it's also, I get a very strange vibe of the current administration seems to be robbing the place on the way out. Kind of. There's just all this, like, everyone who has a job, like they gave, like the nuclear energy guy, they gave, they gave it to that, that guy who looks like Matt Damon, who steals women's suitcases and no, it's just all this like weird stuff going on that you could tell it's just you know, the blatant corruption. It, it looks like, um, you know, it looks like, you know, a, a communist country or something in terms of like the, the blatant nature of a lot of this corruption. And so I'm kind of, I'm kind of very excited for the prospect of the consequences of that coming, the consequences of lock, last lack of trust in the system or lack of trust in like a unified system. It's kind of like when people start to see to cheer for the maybe eventual demise of the EU, you know, the European Union, they're like, wow, you know, it's like there will be a, a, a Brexit in the US at some point. And sort of like the real Brexit, I don't think it's going to be a good thing in the short term, but it's the first it's the first part of like an, a healing process that needs to happen. The last time they did it in the US yeah. and, uh, and Brexit, it, 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 it ended up in a civil war. Yeah, there was a lot of things going on there, but uh, uh, I, the, I don't think that um, there's already measures and things going on. So one of my favorite things in um, government in the US, which is a crazy oxymoron because I hate the government. <laughs> but one of my favorite trends is something called nullification. So according to the the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution, basically says all rights that are not explicitly given to the federal government are reserved to the states and the people. And basically what that 
ends up translating to is if you have um, it, a state can make a law that supersedes fe the federal law. The federal law is below the state law at a certain, you know, and so which in practice is not the way it works at all, but <laughs> it's supposed to work that way. However, um, we saw some interesting things, for example, in I don't know how many years it's been, but uh, marijuana cannabis has been illegal in the U.S for many, many years. And the state of Colorado decided to, and this was a ballot initiative, this wasn't a, through the legislature, this was individuals voting on their own legislation, right? Um, they legalized all marijuana, recreationally, commercially, whatever. And for a few years, it was a very strange situation because the state said you could legally operate, but the federal government said no. And at some point, you had legally operating dispensaries that would get raided by the federal police, and but they were legally operating. And then eventually, that that stopped happening. And then you had uh, these legal businesses were not were still not able to travel. They were not able to get bank accounts. They were not all this kind of like stuff, but they were still legal. And that's all been improving over time. Now there's a whole lot of. Uh, Maybe a third of the U.S. I can't. I don't know off the top of my head the numbers, but maybe a third has legal marijuana now, and it's still illegal at the federal level. But just everyone accepts you can do it. There's even some banks that will serve them now, things like that. And I'm seeing nullification kind of things start to creep in in other departments as well. Um, so, for example, a couple of years ago, the state of New Hampshire passed a law, and I'm sure other states did as well explicitly nullifying federal gun laws and basically saying you know if you if the federal government passes a a law restricting your ability to own a firearm this kind of whatever then we will not enforce that and that's that's not the law here and that will produce an interesting situation where then you have local and state police trying to block and get in the way of federal police at some point and then more of this kind of stuff needs to happen, I think. And especially with money in crypto, the, the federal government has the worst approach to this possible. They're trying to do some weird, there's some new regulation that came into effect this year that basically says, if you receive $10,000 worth of crypto or more in like a single transaction or for a single purpose, then that then you need to completely kyc whoever sent it to you it's so or you know it's a serious crime or something and it's like okay well that doesn't make sense because what happens if you're a, a minor and you just get your block reward straight from the sky and how do you kyc the sky you know you can't do that or if you work for a dow or if you have a a tip jar a donation jar for your site and then all of a sudden someone sends you like eleven thousand in crypto there you go who sent it i don't know and i don't think that that's going to be enforceable at all but also uh, i'm working with some local legislators to see if we can get something going to basically say yeah that law doesn't it doesn't apply here screw you <laughs> you know and to start driving that wedge between um the federal um regime and, yeah it's so yeah. at some at some point it's at some point, what I'm hoping for is a an obsolescence of a lot of the federal government, rather than like I don't want to I don't want a violent revolution, right? I don't want anything like that. I want to prevent that, but I think that we need to start moving away from that. Just like we're separating money from state, that doesn't mean that as soon as you you get your first crypto, you just like stop paying taxes right away and just you know everything and then just get raided like no don't like don't be crazy don't don't get don't get hurt right but the more and more you can be like all right this money is outside of the control of the government it just is and i and now i realize i choose my i choose to pay taxes right i could roll the dice and just like i'm not saying me but I'm, one could choose to roll the dice and just say you know what all my crypto the government doesn't know it exists i'm just going to play it like that um, but the point is, every bit that we start to move away from that, away from being connected to the system, and every 
local jurisdiction that moves away from the federal jurisdiction. I think that's a good thing. Interesting take on it, Joel. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we have a new guest, two new guests in a way that deserve a little introduction. Welcome, Jeremy, Jeremy Smith and Hi. Kalista. How are you doing? Our Bitcoin Cash block. Welcome. The the first coin that I that really has uh, its uh, genesis block fifteen years ago today. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. I'm, glad you, I'm glad you two could make it today. Um, thanks yeah, for showing up. We are trying glad to, to make a um, make a stream of inclusivity in a uh, in a way. Uh, my message to all of crypto that I'm trying to send out is that we have to realize how small our communities really are uh, compared to the broader masses that exist. The huge amount of people that. Some of them re still don't know that any of these cryptos exist. And, um, you know, how to reach out to the, to, that's basically my main question of today, how to reach those people that are so stuck in their social bubble that if they already heard about crypto for them, it's just, uh, they, it's all scams, you know, and, uh, what what should we do about about that? So that is that is in a way the question I'm asking myself. I've been living bankless for about ten years now. I've been speaking out about how I like to use crypto uh, instead of debt currencies because of my consciousness, um, and and that for me it's not about getting rich on using crypto. It's about being able to avoid. Uh, uh, what I see as a as a inherently broken and corrupt system that that I don't want to be part of. I don't want to be included in that lifestyle because I don't want to empower all these what I see as wrong things that are happening in the world today. And I really believe crypto money could play a huge benefit to that. But uh, I, for example, gathered a, a Liberland passport in, in my journey. I I came back from that uh, thinking, and I, I don't believe that either money or politics is going to be the solution. And my my goal for the upcoming years is to create a new religion where I'm uh, going to try to convince people that uh, there is a different way possible through religion. And a lot of churches have special exemptions in the law, and you can get very far with that. If you from your inner belief uh, claim something, it's very difficult for them to just uh, say that it's it's not allowed, you know? For example, I'm born in the Netherlands. The king claims all his powers to arise from the grace of God. So prove it, prove my, that grace of God to me, you know? And uh, you can say that the Pope has uh, granted you that that uh, that will, but who is the Pope? So oh, he's a Protestant, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but still, he the first uh, the first uh, official visit of the king goes to the Vatican and not okay. any other nation, you know. Okay. So um, that's a little bit my journey that I would like okay. to share with you. Um, but um, I'm very interested to hear what you are all about because Jeremy and Kalista, this is I think the first time we really get to speak with each other. So um, feel free to to share any anything that uh, that comes up to your mind, what you are doing, uh, and things like that. I, I would love to hear about it. I'm actually yeah, going to go and get on my laptop. I'm going to go downstairs and, and get set up because I'm having a lot of connection issues from my phone. Okay. So right. I will be back in just a minute. See you soon. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. Wondering about it. Okay, brilliant. Brilliant. Sometimes the microphone isn't set up right. Uh, but yeah, I think the theme for me, the what really changed my ability to make inroads with crypto was the realization that proof of work is universal, right? So in cryptocurrency, you have your mining, you know, and the higher signal comes from the person who spent the most energy. And that's what you should pay attention to as legitimate, right? Because they're just the proof is in the pudding. And I spent many years, at least eight years, 
telling everyone I could about crypto and nobody really gave a shit. <laughs> as much as I would go on and on and on and on and on and on about it, nobody really cared. Not even my like mum. You know, she was like, "What are you talking about?" And it didn't matter that the price went up. It didn't matter that crypto became more seen in the headlines. It didn't matter about any of that. What changed was one day I realized people pay attention to things that have proof of work, or as I would sometimes call it in crypto, it would be like proof of passion. So you think of like a football team, what do they have? They have a uniform, they have a bunch of fanatics, they're fucking serious, they go every week, right? They have a stadium, they have a physical place. Church, exactly the same thing. What does a religion have? It's got a bunch of fanatics or, you know, adherents that are, you know, they have a physical place, they have a way of doing things and they've been cracking away on it for thousands of years. And so now everybody says, well, that's legitimate. What about a company? Same thing. They've got a logo, they've got employees, they've got an office, all that stuff. So I realized, wait a second, the reason that people are taking those things seriously and not me, at least in my journey in crypto, uh, is that we don't have those things. So what did I do? I started the Bitcoin Cash podcast. And at first, you know, it had very few listeners or anything, but over time it's gro- it's been growing, growing, growing. And I've, it's like mining more blocks into my proof of work, right? So I've just recently done the 102nd episode, taken a bit more than three years. And now it's very, very easy to convince anybody about crypto. It's no problem because they say, what are you interested in? And I say, cryptocurrency. And they say, what do you do? What, what's the deal with that? And I say, well, I have a podcast that has 102 episodes. Boom, right there. They're convinced. Like maybe not that this is the greatest thing and they're going to put their entire life savings into it or something, but they're like, this is something this guy is serious about because you cannot have 100 episodes of two hours of discussion unless there's a lot going on here. Like you must have had at least 100 people to talk to as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's my number one recommendation. If anybody is struggling to break through, with people not really giving a shit about their crypto endeavors you have to find something difficult that proves how much you care about crypto and do it and then other people will see that and recognize that and they'll become a lot more interested as a result of that signal so that's my uh, approach tip on that front yeah we do our podcast now for 10 years and then uh, one of the earliest episodes um, now 10 years ago we had we were already talking about crypto, ab- yeah. about Bitcoin back then. And we had also, maybe you know her, she was also in the Dash community. Um, Amanda Billy Rock is now Amanda yeah. Johnson, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah she was 10 oh, years ago on our uh, podcast <laughs> talking about Bitcoin. So, uh, yeah. Maybe I can get her on again for next year. Yeah. Still, she's still so, around. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. There's, uh, um... yeah? There's a, her husband, Pete, who I don't know if some people remember uh, Cop Block in some other projects back in the day, but mm-hmm. Pete, Pete's a legend of, of his own, right? Um, he he does a a show for like a, a Dash development group called the Dash Incubator. And, and he does like a sizzle reel, like a one or two minute intro clip before like these things. And okay. I told him he, he needs to start publishing those separately because they're, they're, uh, they're very you know, in tune with like why we do this kind of stuff. It's very like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, taking taking into account like the what's happening in the world and the censorship and things like that and all that kind of stuff. Some good stuff. Anyway, sorry, yeah, I just had to ramble on uh, you, you mentioned oh, Amanda. Great. If he makes an update on those intro videos every now and again when something new pops up, then they can be yes. great uh, content. Every Monday it's a different one. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. But somebody in the chat was uh, posting, uh, this is JF. <laughs> Yeah, this is a joke, by the way. What be be ready to be triggered. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin is the only uh, coin we need uh, more regulation to build trust uh, for the people. <laughs> uh, yeah, this uh, this JF. Um, I won't uh, really trust crypto until the government uh, tells me uh, the. Okay, well, it's, always, it's safe. Yeah. We always yeah. love JF's comments. <laughs> yeah, it's a joke, yeah. by the way. Yeah, it's very difficult to win the trust of people that have been living a incredible lifestyle all their lives and had an incredible amount of luxury that is unprecedented in in hundreds of years, and and try to convince them that uh, you know it can be better. But what is better? Because 
well, a lot of that luxury might just disappear. And um, yeah, yeah, it's it's a, like I said, it's a very complicated story that is much more to do with just money. And um, I found it very difficult. What you said, Jeremy, I've also been speaking out about crypto. Actually, our previous guest before Joel recorded my first ever public speech somewhere in 2013, where I had for the first time after many hours of study, I had the confidence that I could take this to the public. And I was talking about Bitcoin and saying, I'm not, I'm not surprised that if the people don't understand money, that they are that the economy is going to shit, you know, and how and and ever since that moment back then I was like, oh, to, uh, 2026. So nobody trusted me anyway, you know, because what is this young guy telling me how to live my life and uh, he doesn't know anything. So yeah, now it's 10 years later and well, I started wearing, the, you know, there's a lot of side effects from clowns. today's uh, society. <laughs> I, we are living in a clown's world and this is my side effect. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's not his real hair, by the way. <laughs> no, it's not real. It's not. I would I be impressed if it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the, I also, I make, uh, I've made, uh, in 2020, I started streaming two weeks before the pandemic was uh, announced globally. And I started as Hotler Hangout, but I quickly changed that to Honkler Hangout, and that's when the the wig got into place. And and to, uh, today I uh, my stream is called King Honkspiracy because I'm the king of Honkspiracies, but written as Honkspiracy. So uh, you know I try to bring it's it a in a honk, funny then. way. I try to bring it in a funny way, um, but. Yeah, for me, it's not really been working out as I was hoping, but yeah, I don't know how to work. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with all the choices. Now you're, I you're stuck with the wig now. Can't I'm get stuck with the wig. wig. <laughs> well, you're committed to it. So, I, this it's is like also, the shitty tattoo you get when you're young. And it's the, year so <laughs> far, the year so far started great for me with uh, Bitcoin yes, going up a couple percent and uh, Epstein uh, yeah. getting a lot of attention. John Doe 36 getting yeah. into the news. So, mm -hmm. yeah. but we have a guest. Uh, yeah, uh, but I don't know yes, if you yes, yes. told people that you're uh, where they can find you on the internet uh, or your your podcast. Oh yeah, well you can just go to bitcoincashpodcast.com and there's yeah. loads of info there. You can hit up the. Mm -hmm. uh, we got an FAQ which I've been slowly again expanding that over the years. So now there's probably I don't know. 30 or 40 sort of articles of the most common things that everybody bring us. And there's always more to do. I definitely need to add some about the Now it's coming up to like, how do I do cold storage and stuff like that is now uh, needs to be added. But you know, yeah. the same questions everybody asks, like why Bitcoin cash? Why not Bitcoin? What about the low fees? How does yeah. mining work? Like uh, why, what about Monero? What about Ethereum? What about the branding? What about, governments what about the environment what about everything? like yeah, we've got a huge yeah. list uh, there that people like a lot so that could be really good and then obviously in the footers you can find links to more stuff all the episodes are there and it's on yeah every standard platform so yeah, yeah. So, but, uh, oh, okay yeah joe or i don't know if somebody wants to say yeah. no i was i was uh oh, you, I, was okay. talking, I, I made a video last week something like that called, uh, talking about hyperinflation how all these crypto coins 15 years ago did not exist and how they have all been created in the past 15 years and how that uh, hyperinflation that occurred is expressing itself against Bitcoin, who also got his own hyperinflation going on. But because of the network effect and, and, and basically being the gateway to all these others, um, you know, the, the people that always focus on claiming all the coins to be scams and dead because look at the price. Um, they they often don't see how big of a uh, burden all the all these creations of new coins have been on the price, you know, and, and the, the current time we live in is really a unique opportunity for everybody that most of the coins are at a all time low, they might go lower in case next week uh, ETF launches and the price doubles and it might have another another crash, you know, because 
the Bitcoin dominance, in my opinion, is nothing more than a USD dominance. The people want to have their dollars and take profit as soon as they believe their dollars are worth more than before. And that drives the price down. And it seems like I'm so flabbergasted how how ignorant a lot of the people in crypto space are to this effect. And that it's not more common knowledge that, that you know, uh, none of these projects have died out. Why, why are you calling them out for being dead? That already makes them alive, you know. And I'm, I'm oftentimes so, so surprised with, with, with the, the narrative that people support and, and, the, and the, the beliefs they have. I mean, like, is, is, are we with such a small group that sees the bigger picture here? And now I'm just as yeah, a you are, motivation. But... Yeah, I mean, it's really just another thing that crypto, I think, teaches you pretty fast. And I think that's also why it's related to so many of these other things in the world. Like once somebody gets crypto, they start to get a lot of the other stuff that's going on in the in the world as well, too. Because you kind of need to get past like this huge wall of like gaslighting. Like, yeah. oh, you know, crypto is going to die. Crypto is a scam. Crypto is going away. Crypto is just a pump and dump. Oh, it's gone forever. It's not coming back. Blah 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 blah. Like it can't work. The economics. Blah 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 blah. And like, as once somebody realizes, like, I've been hearing about this for however many years, and I'm clearly not getting the truth because none of nothing that's been said is consistent or makes sense. And then they do their own research, and then they're like, oh, I see. And the same. And then some people get stuck on BTC as well too. Very unlucky. They hit you know the wrong info sources to start with. They don't get past that. But even then, some people get into it and then they think, no, it still isn't right. And they keep digging. And then they get into the real uh, story. And then once they down that rabbit hole, it's impossible to to pull them out. So uh, yeah. Yeah, it's true. People can be lied to for a long time. But once you get somebody out once, it's like, you know, I always think it's like the Matrix. It's exactly like that movie. Like they, they've only got a few and 99% of the people are in here. But once you get someone out, they're out. Like there's no, you don't need to do it twice. So yeah, yeah, you can't um, unlearn what you have learned. Exactly. Yeah. I find that's um, for the most for the most part, it's true, right? I would say about seven, maybe eight out of ten cases where you, when they're out, they're out. Uh, but there's a lot of people who were never out to begin with. They just they talk about it, and I think that there's this um. I think it's a destructive narrative when we see like market cap, Twitter mentions, things like that around a lot of these kinds of projects. Um, because I think that the the relative user base or the people that care about like the the we call it the freedom coins, right? Maybe not not the not freedom coins. Who cares about that? That's a different subject. But the freedom coins, uh, I don't think they've really gone away that much. I think they're still there. Maybe there have been a little bit of recession in like total number of users or whatever, but it's just that they borrowed a giant speculative network effect that came and went. And so it's just, it's kind of like, um, it, it's, it's kind of like saying, you know, you have a, you have a cafe and you have like a few, a few people, a few customers every single day. And then there's a big sports game that happens right next to there. And all of a sudden you're just flooded with people. They're just like all over the place. You're just like, oh, wow, we're doing awesome. And then they all leave and they're like, what the hell? Our business is ruined. It's just like, well, that was, an, that, was just, that was a thing that happened, right? And we, with, with crypto, there's a lot of that kind of stuff where like everyone was like, oh, my coin's going to the moon. And which is just a little bit weird to me to think about like a my coin kind of thing to Begin with rather than just the tool i mean if you work for the actual thing if you're full-time in it you can say that but like just random people i bought a thing and now it's well that can be like you can have five different whatever and so then they get all like it's going up and then oh nothing happens anymore and the thing that blows my mind i hate it when people say this, <laughs> is oh nothing happens i don't hear anything anymore it's just dead it's like more things have been actually happening in the code base of you know pick your coin more things more users more like on board like this is all and they don't care because it's it's all a translation of the you know when price go up and that's one thing i've learned over time is that um 
there's very probably about um maybe 10 percent, if that of all human speech is like rational good faith <laughs> conversation almost everything else is signal social signaling you say something not because it is factually correct or you believe it but you're trying to say like i'm one of those guys or i'm one of these guys or there's all this like something else so when people say like oh, i don't know what happened you know well b cash is dead look at the price chart or whatever like they're, they're not saying they're not idiots because they're not using their rational brain to come up with that statement they're it's just like a like oh like it's a phrase I yeah got, yeah it's like i a, got money oh i think you don't have money i think i won it doesn't matter what game is being played i won because the orange coin and the green coin and i won not like Oh, by the way, when did you buy your Bitcoin cash? Did you buy it? And you <laughs> yeah, said, maybe, exactly. you're, maybe you're more, maybe you're doing better than me. Where, like, there's no, like, it's not even like about who has more money. It's just like yeah. win, lose at a very deep human tribal level. And I don't think we're having, just watch, like, for people who are involved in fundamentals, who use the kind of stuff every day. Once you, I think you're going to really see an interesting case where you're going to see some cryptos break through, especially ones that come back from the dead. That's going to be, that's going to be fun. And mm -hmm. when that happens, all of a sudden the narrative will come up with just a bunch of stuff like, wow, came out of nowhere. Or like, wow, it's just, everything's going, it's like literally we gained 12 new users, but the price doubled. So all of a sudden everything's happening. Like <laughs> we'll, we'll, you'll be able to see that anyway, small rant. I'm sorry. Oh, I like well, your things. I like your uh, uh, so By the way, somebody uh, somebody posted in the chat. Um, you don't need a cactus to be into crypto, but it helps. Uh, I think that's uh, about you, uh, Yoshi. Yeah, I showed my cactus right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The hair isn't it's real now. The monkey comes out of the sleeve. Okay. About your uh, hair, uh, Yoshi. Since yeah, but uh, we have a new, a new one, new face. Uh, hi, how you're doing? Uh, let's see. That's uh, yeah. Okay, Kalisti. Oh, yeah, Kalisti. Yeah. Hi, Kalisti. Congratulations with 15 years of Bitcoin, and uh, could you let us know what you're all about? All right. So now that I'm finally out of bed, sorry guys. Oh yeah, no, yeah, no, it's okay. No, it's okay. No, just uh, uh, please, please mute your computer. You got a big echo. Or I will be silent myself. Maybe that helps. Yeah. Is it is it me with the echo or? I think so. Yes. Oh. Uh... It's okay it's now. Okay. First, I guess let me unplug my miner and then let's figure that out. All right. Do you have miners in your house? But the home miners go into the S9s. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's what you well, that's like, every, every, does, every... does that make it any better? Uh, yeah, it makes it better now, I think. Yeah, yeah. The echo is gone. Yeah. We will all be silent. Yeah. Yes. If we hear, uh, if anyone has like young children running around, they should, should say, sorry, I got to put away my miners. Turn off the oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In the past, we make that joke, uh, like like uh, ten years ago, uh, because when uh, our PCs are making too much noise, noise, it's the mining software. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so what am I all about? I'm all about freedom, money, baby. I'm here for Bitcoin Cash all day, every day. I eat shit and breathe Bitcoin Cash. Um, it's my life you know so i know some people like joel would disagree with that i'm a maximalist though i know i'm not like okay i'm more like a 99 percent maximalist because like <laughs> i do see marriage to other coins i do see interesting technologies i do see practical use cases in other coins ultimately what i've been telling people lately is use the chain use the coin that's most valuable to you for me that's bitcoin cash so <laughs> it's, just, it's just a no-brainer for me not to i'm like i'm not gonna sit here and like poop on like other coins other than btc really um because you know use what works PTC just doesn't work, so. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, um, it's something that, as I kind of mentioned earlier on the show, 
from like 2016 to 2022, 2020, around then, Bitcoin most kind of almost worked. That's the problem. It's just, it was like, just, you know, if you paid a couple of dollars for your coffee, you could get it to work kind of thing. But then now it's just like, it's done. It just, and, and you know, it's, it's kind of funny is, um, Another thing that we studied for many, many years to come, I think, is the whole Taproot Wizards um, situation. Because um, Udi and Eric, um, I guess former Maxis, um, embarked on this journey to <laughs> save Bitcoin. I, I still don't fully understand their motivations or, or end goals or whatever, but basically by bringing ordinals and basically bringing monkey JPEGs to Bitcoin, uh, they simultaneously they saved Bitcoin to a certain extent because they brought a lot of new people in to do things with Bitcoin and they increased the security budget. So now it does, you don't care if the halving goes down because now fee revenue is actually going up. It's, those are all good things. But then they completely ruined any idea of digital cash use case. It's done. They just destroyed that. And as a side effect, they also destroyed Ethereum because if you look at Ethereum's fee revenue, it's been going down because all the the hype moved the bitcoin to like create these dumb things on chain and like it's it's kind of beautiful in a certain destructive way where it just cleaned out a whole lot of like misconceptions and hype and things like that in the space and just really pushed stuff forward so um i have never heard as many maximalists triggered by anything before as these things even maybe the early days of Bitcoin Cash, when it was like, you know, like right, like on Coinbase, and then you get like added to BitPay and like a few, like a few things like that. And then just like those early days of just like losing their shit at everything. And yeah, you know, where, where Pirate Bay was like making fun of it. And it's like, you know, all that stuff, right? Maybe that. But now it's just like, it's an existential crisis because they can't play with their. They're a little Raspberry Pi anymore because now it costs too much because people are sending monkey JPEGs to the chain. And it's it's dark and beautiful at the same time. So pay attention to what's happening. It's in, on that front. That's very interesting. But these guys have got so much cope. That's the weirdest thing about it is they they both have come out and said very heavily, like, we were in a cult. We were, you know, the whole laser eye things. That was all kind of nonsense. We were bought into all this bullshit, et cetera, et cetera. And they've, they've backtracked on that, but they haven't got over the bridge of like, and the same with Nick Carter as well. He's done the exact same thing, but they're like, we're out of the cult. So now we're the foremost experts on it. And they have zero additional credit or um, recognition of all the people that dodged the cult from the beginning. Whether, which obviously mm -hmm. was the BCH community, but anybody else in crypto who saw it coming, they were in Ethereum, there was something else like that. They have not done any, at least publicly, well, they've done some, but only very inadvertently reflecting on like, wait, we got caught up into all this and now we're out. So we're better than the people who are still in. But the people who were never in in the first place, what did they know that we didn't? They haven't kind of got there yet, you know? Yeah, it's a certain kind of a virtue signal, I think, because it's like saying we're out, but we're not shit coiners. Like the ones who did before, they left because they were unrighteous. We we're righteous, so we left. Kind of, it's a weird kind of line they're trying to walk. But uh, it, it's an interesting, like, we'll see what happens. Right. The thing is, the um, the cult. What I I am appreciating about this cult in particular. Um, is that its heroes keep on getting worse and worse <laughs> over time because it's just like when you start to excommunicate all the good, it's like the um, Joseph Stalin airbrushing out people as he has them bumped off, it's like that kind of a thing. It's like, hey, I like that guy. Oh, that guy was actually pretty smart. Too bad, they're gone. You have to do freaking Michael Saylor and who are the swan Bitcoin guys. Like, that's all you got left. Sorry. And so the people that are left say dumber and dumber things attract dumber and dumber people but also push away smart anyone who's relatively smart left over in there so it's just a constant the opposite of a virtuous cycle right you know vicious so it's cycle, interesting yeah. to watch 
Do you think the whole thing uh, collapses? Uh, it must be get to some some point that it uh, that it at all turns and this whole BTC thing, yeah, will f- f- fall apart. It'll end fast. It'll really end fast. And that's the thing, though. Yeah. It's like just slowly, then suddenly, and it's all based around the the price. Like I have a theory which I've floated a little bit, but and I'm not saying this is a high probability. But I'm saying there's a chance that mm-hmm. this year everyone's expecting, yeah, crypto bull run, blah blah blah. But imagine a scenario where BTC doesn't get past the all time high. Maybe it rises a bit. What are we at? Forty two rises up to. 45, 50, everyone's, yeah, it's gone 55, 60, gets to 65 and stops and then starts mm-hmm. fading. That, that'll that be the end of it. That'll be the end of every four years it pumps, all-time highs, we're all getting rich, blah, blah, blah. Like, that will just, that'll be it. Uh, so, and my, my reasoning that I think this is possible, not only because the world's kind of moved a bit on past Bitcoin, but is because every previous bull run it, the bubble, it, the euphoria pops once the on-chain fees get high enough that yeah. everybody is like, fuck, I'm trying to send to the exchange or out of the exchange or to my mate. And it's ridiculous. This isn't working. And once that hits a critic, because that's the one thing, you know, you can spin a lot of narratives, but somebody has to pay those fees at the end of the day. So eventually it gets to a point that everyone's like, this is not working at 50 or $60 fees. And this time around, unlike the previous two times, it, it's already it's already maxed. The capacity is full. The fees are already ten dollars. As soon as volatility starts and euphoria starts, the fees are just going to the moon. And if that shuts off the the bull run before it hits the all time high, boom, that'll be it. The rats will be off the ship. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I I have what it may might be a more pessimistic take. I don't know if you call it pessimistic or optimistic. Um, uh, but I think it's I think Bitcoin's gonna be around for a while. Uh because it, it hit this stage of it's you know it's it's in the settlement asset thing all the banks and stuff like all the like now all the people that were pushing against it now see value in it because it's it's um it's valuable for their means they get to use a settlement asset you get to have their little digital gold whatever um and so over the next five years i think it'll continue to do well maybe not as exponentially over 10 years, it probably won't. You know, I, I hate predicting prices because I don't know anything. So don't believe yeah. me. But um, <laughs> I, probably over like 10 years, you're going to start to see things that are actually mass adopted and useful start to actually take over place and not just be like under the surface there. So I guess we'll see. I mean, also, who knows? There, There's always something that could happen. Like it could come out of left field, like some... Um, I do notice that uh, that there is pressure in the Bitcoin community to scale now because of the Taproot stuff, the Taproot Wizards. Um, I don't think it's going to happen, but you never know. <laughs> you know, you never know if in a, a moment of pressure and confusion, they might start ad- uh, adopting drive chain technology or something like that, and then stuff gets like who knows. I don't know what's going to happen, but. <laughs> My prediction is going to be around for a while. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to Ethereum, though, because Ethereum seems much more vulnerable to obsolescence than Bitcoin. Uh-huh. I know. I honestly feel like it's... I used to think more like you, Joel, where, where it's going to happen mm-hmm. a, a lot slower than we kind of think. The last, I would say, three months have significantly changed my mind on that, actually. I think next year might be the year that BTC dies. Or, I'm sorry, sorry. I mean, we're 25, 25, 25, 25, I mean this year. I actually mean this year. Like by the end of this year, by December of this year, I think we'll have a similar level of shock in terms of what BTC is doing that we did last month in December of 2023. Um, because it's the whole gradually then suddenly thing, right? Let's think about 2021 and 2022, what we were up against then compared to what we're up against now. It's it, it's like not even night and day. It's like Earth and Mars. <laughs> yeah yeah so i really think uh the fee problem i mean just as you described i mean these are going to skyrocket as soon as there's any amount of volatility any amount of activity you literally cannot adopt btc even if they go for some of these scaling solutions 
Um, CTV, first off, is not really a scaling solution. It, it, I would say it's actually less of a scaling solution than Segwit is, to, to be honest. Where we've been, Where here, we've been before. here before, huh? Uh, and then I would say drive chains. Well, you know, they say drive chains is supposedly an altcoin killer, but what's the incentive for altcoins to come to BTC? There, there's no reason. The only value proposition of BTC nowadays is one, if you believe the block space scarcity narrative, which I personally don't, then sure, I guess have fun paying fees because, you know, I don't like being broke by sending a simple transaction. That's crazy. I don't know why anyone would do that. So I think those people are crazy. The uh, other thing that you could do, I mean, it's like, why would you use BTC if it wasn't called Bitcoin? So yeah, if there's yeah. all of these other chains that do what Bitcoin was supposed to do, but better, faster and cheaper, Oh, well, I guess it's not called Bitcoin unless you call Bitcoin cash Bitcoin, which some people do. But, you know, uh, there's also all the other great coins out there like Monero. Like, I guess, uh, you know, Joel really loves Dash and actually uses Dash, uh, apparently. I So, you know, if there's adoption and again, what uses or uh, what you can use effectively is what you should use. Whatever brings you value is what you should use. Um, I think sailing on a name brand doesn't work long term and I think we're uh, starting to enter that suddenly phase of uh, gradually gradually to suddenly yeah it's an interesting take and I, I I share a lot of what you say is a lot of that thought it's been mostly driven by uh, the previous previous rise in price and the the, the the enthusiasm that most of the the early adopters had in believing in a freedom money but the more that it moves away from that, which it has clearly been doing, as we all agree, I guess. Um, yeah, at some point, the people are going to find out, you know, and that's a little bit what I try to say with that hyperinflation rant that I just gave. The, 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 mm. the truth must come out at some point. And I mean, um, I still love the technology and everything that it has helped brought us already. But to move further and 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 uh, get get to a global adoption, it's yeah. I I've been saying to my maximalist friends, like I don't see it happening. Any solution that you have presented to me, I wish that I could believe in it like you do. But you know, and um, yeah, it's it's gonna be exciting and an exciting year. That's for sure. I also Alistic, think Ethereum Alistic. is. Uh not going to have a bright future either for similar reasons not exactly the same uh the eth people aren't as crazy in my mind they're actually trying to do cool things with tech they're actually trying to make a sound monetary network i just think that the premise is just lost. so no shade to ethereum i just don't think they're gonna last what do you think about other coins like cardano for instance cardano in my mind is purely academic um so it's one of those things, oh, cool, do a bunch of research on Cardano, um, you know, try to pioneer these novel technologies in a very similar way that Ethereum does. Like, I feel like engineers really like ETH and ADA type thing. Um, but I don't think that they're poised to become global money for the world, which is what our goal is in Bitcoin Cash. So if that's not even their goal, then great, whatever, they're not competition then. Uh, yeah, something I've asked all the others, uh, but not you yet, Kalisti. Uh, what are you What are you working on for 2024? And and what do you see happening, maybe on a broader scale than just crypto? Yeah, so oh, what I'm working on in 2024 is uh, mostly Celine Wallet and things related. So I mean, my life really is crypto. I'll be working with Jeremy on that, and uh, we've got some fun stuff in the pipeline that we're excited about. And then. Um, I mean, outside of crypto, I am really just trying to dodge the election season. I'm trying to like stay kind of in my bubble, to be honest. Like I, the last couple of months for me and really the theme of the new year has been um, shedding things that don't work for me or aren't good for me or that aren't aligned with my values or views or the things that I want in life. Um, you know, really keeping close the people in my life that do and focusing on building stability, growth. Um, just ain't nobody got time for just dumb crap anymore, really. I mean, who who does? Nobody. So um, I'm not getting any younger. Nobody else is. Um, there's work to do. We got to do it. Somebody's got to do it, right? So if nobody else is doing it, like I'm gonna. 
Um, yeah, Celine Wallet. I'd I'll, I'd love to talk to you about that. So, um, Celine Wallet. Our goal is to be the simplest, most user friendly crypto wallet that you have ever used. We want to pass the mom test, the grandma test, we, but at the same time, we want to be feature rich and have all of the features that an experienced Bitcoin casher would expect out of a fully featured wallet. Um, so balancing that is a fun challenge. And um, I think we're onto something really because a lot of the community has uh, given us a lot of the support. Our, our user count is approaching a thousand. Uh, we released last May and we've got a new release coming out pretty soon here. And uh, yeah, we just, we want to showcase everything that Bitcoin Cash has to offer in one really sleek package. Is there a is timeline, there a timeline for, a for a release? Um, well, I wanted to have it out like at the end of last month, but I ran into some snags. Um, and then over the past like two weeks, I've been doing like all these podcasts and spaces and stuff, which have definitely been cutting into coding time. So I'm trying to like, like after this, this is the last one that I'm on for a while. So I'm really just trying to double down on getting this out. You know, if not by the end of the week, then, you know, soon, I guess, because like most of the stuff that I'm working on is like pretty much done at this point. So there's not a whole lot left before we're going to okay. get it. Okay. So it's so it's an almost, almost, almost finished product. product. No, it's not an almost no, no, finished. No, 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 it's, it's, an almost finished it's an almost finished release. Yeah, we have the, the it's already out. It's at Celine.cash, S E L E N E dot cash. Okay. Um, okay. and you can download it now and, and you can zap you some stats live on air if you really want. It's a very quick download. Oh, that's oh, that's that's a good look. Look. Yeah, well, yeah, well, is always always willing, always willing to, willing to <laughs> immediately jump in. Jump in. <laughs> Yeah, so we're we're kind of in an MVP right now. Um, we wanted to get the the basic send and receive stuff out. That was back in May, and then Jeremy pulled together translations for like most of the world's, uh, most of the world's transaction or not sorry not transactions languages. Sorry, I read something on Telegram that put my train of thought. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff that we have coming up now is just kind of adding out of that core wallet functionality. Um, I'm going to try to figure out this echo. Sorry. Uh, what was the name, by the way? Celine? Celine. It's called Celine. S-E-L-E-N-E -E dot cash. C-A-S-H. S-E-L-E-N-E. -E. And if you type, if you're on the App Store or whatever, you type in Celine wallet, it will come up. It's got a little BCH logo with a, a moon on it. Uh, it's like, um, yeah, it's... And it's pretty simple. It's it's like have, Callisti yeah. said. There you go. And it's like uh, Callisti said. The the game plan is to well, basically, uh, when we started the project, it was kind of about the fact that Bitcoin Cash needed better wallets. The most popular wallet at that time was the Bitcoin.com mm -hmm. wallet, which you know a lot of people have used and know it. And yeah, it's been, you know it's been great and everything. But over time, they have more and more like random coins that I personally don't care about. They have more and more ads and random garbage. And the goal was, look, crypto needs to be slicker and easier than this. So we just made a wallet like, you know, when you open it up, it already just pops up your QR code. It doesn't make you back up your seat or anything immediately. It, the receive is right there. So when I'm onboarding people, I say, have you tried Bitcoin Cash? They say, no. I say, here, down you know, download this wallet. It's super small, the actual app, like it will download in just a couple seconds because uh, it's a very, very small app file. Like it's only four or five megabytes, I think, when a lot of apps are 50 or, you know, 100. And then, so you can already just have your scan ready to go and you just scan as soon as their phone opens, bing, it just pops up instantly, money received, and that's it. No registration, no sign up, no KYC. Okay, and great. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. This is just our like now. um yeah, here you go. Do you want me to send some stats? Yeah. Do you try it? <laughs> Hold up your I phone, know. I'll send you some stats. I, I got I got my uh, I I will never say no, of course. I will never say no. Let's see if I if I can get it like this. Yeah, there we go. All right, oh. brilliant. Let's see. Oh okay. uh let's we see got my a green screen, screen uh yeah, my screen background is uh it's not um let's hang on a second maybe i need to turn the brightness up get the high contrast there it's difficult but you know i got my uh, bitcoin cash uh, 
I can't believe it won't. We, we, can, we might uh, we might be able to use it for the next raffle. <laughs> yeah, what just uh, hit it to me on the. Nah, send me a screenshot on uh, Twitter. I'll send you. I'll send you some uh, BCH. You'll see it'll just pop up I'll like do straight it here, away. Wait. I do it in the in the Skype. I do it in okay, the right. chat. Nice. Oh, I didn't have it on the phone yet. I would just to show the website to the to the the people on the. I'm going to install it on the phone as well. Yeah. All right. How is this? How my sound? Oh man, what an improvement! Yeah, so much better. Oh, is that a QR code that we need to send some sets to? Let's get that. Well, we are we are doing raffles <laughs> once in a while, so if you are sending sets, we are gonna forward it to the community. And actually, we are running a uh, giveaway for the Libertarian oh, yeah. Party, or how to say that, a crowdfunding for the Libertarian Party of the Netherlands. Sam. All my, all funds that are being donated today are going to the Libertarian Party of the Netherlands. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. Done. Well, I guess I just Thank donated a dollar to the Libertarian Party of the Netherlands. Hope right. that <laughs> we hope that they once will get a seat through that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. But we're waiting for one. Change. We're waiting for one more uh, person to uh, appear on the raffle wheel. So if you're on Twitch <laughs> now, you can type uh, exclamation mark Ron Paul, and you can. Uh, Get on the on the wheel. Yeah. And then we st start we start to spin. I got them by the way, guys. Thanks. It's already six dollars by now. E either Bitcoin Cash jumped up. Or uh... oh, no, I sent you some. Okay, okay. I sent you five. I got it as well now. Take a look at it, um, it did, yeah. It, it did I think we have uh, Dutch. Let me see here. Yeah, I think we have if you go in settings. Ooh. You can pick. Maybe we don't have Dutch. Yes. Ah, all that kind uh, of I don't, know, I don't mind. I uh, always read English. So. I'm actually located 20 miles out of Liberland, which is mm -hmm. in Serbia at the moment. So um, I think you might need to put a screenshot in the chat there. You know? yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe maybe we can't do this whole scan it through the screen oh. thing. <laughs> Hmm. Don't worry, don't worry. I got Maybe we Bitcoin need to make the QR course. code bigger. We need to <laughs> expand up the. Uh, no, what, what we need to do is we need to make it uppercase so that it's a smaller payload because uh, some tech specs about QR codes make that possible. Uh, I think Electron Cash does really? that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a link to it. I'm not about to go in the weeds about it right now. <laughs> Part of the problem is also that we are using a green screen and that's the, that doesn't help the, the broadcast of the. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, do you have also like a browser plugin for a Chrome based Not yet. browser? We would love oh, to. Would yeah, love I used to. I really wanted to host it up. I used Ledger Wallet in the past, but they uh, they quit. Yeah, yeah so so fun, funny enough, my. By, uh... Oh, Badger. Yeah, because my, my very first BCH uh, project ever actually was uh, a browser wallet or a browser extension wallet, rather. Mm -hmm. So like a plugin. Um, that's actually what led into me figuring out how I wanted to build Celine. Um, we're probably going to backport some of the code into an extension eventually because okay. I think that's just really yeah. useful to have. There's a lot of things that I think there's a lot of use cases that we can do that are just best suited to having browser integration, things like logins and... Um, uh like pay like paywall type stuff like if i wanted to read some new site uh and i want to read like 100 articles for a dollar kind of thing i could just my yeah, yeah. the website could just ask my browser extension to authorize that dollar kind of thing yeah, yeah. in a long time yeah i think more than a year ago uh, we were using tip bitcoin.cash i don't know if you remember yeah, that one as well yeah yeah i know that's a good one yeah yeah i received my own quit <laughs> it suddenly quit uh my first honk I received on tip Bitcoin cash. Okay. Oh, amazing. Amazing. I had a <laughs> bunch of honk. Uh, I think I've got it in some wallet somewhere, but they need a cash token of it now that we've got cash tokens instead of SLP. I had all yeah, the, like it, millions it, of SLP honk. It kind of died after the smart BCH failed. And they never <laughs> updated it and the community kind of died out. And But it was yeah, exactly. quite a... It was quite a success on a smart BCH. The price, I don't know, went up like crazy. 
Mm -hmm. I'm hoping we can recreate that with with cash tokens. You know that again. That's where the BCH community has really struggled. Like certainly from 2017 to 2020, there were civil wars with BSV and with XEC, and then in 2021 uh, and you know 2022, there finally wasn't. But then we got a bit off track with the whole smart BCH thing, and there was a big surge of momentum. But then it all kind of came apart at the seams. So. I think what we're sort of really focusing on now in the community, which seems to be going well, certainly in 2023, was just not, you know, overstretching things or rushing things. Just do it slowly, do it right, be consistent and, you know, and still be there because the fundamentals are still so strong. It's just that, yeah, there's been so many like false starts. And that also makes it hard for people to believe in because like you said, like they give it a go and they're like, this is pretty cool, but then they come back later and it's gone or or whatever right so that's why yeah the podcast lean wallet this kind of stuff is like we're serious we're going to be here in five years ten years and i mean things are going great so far so <laughs> fingers uh, crossed you know i think part of the reason why the smart bch collapsed is because of a more bigger attack on on stable coins and they were being stress tested and you had your stable coin on the smart bch and i think because they managed to break that all of B smart bch broke but that's my you know that's my cl red clown's nose well. uh, conspiracy, <laughs> conspiracy theory but yeah, uh, yeah it's, i've been here two hours i need to take off now but so well, very thanks no, thank i you also very much. we got we got our new guest joining okay uh gregor is here to talk about <laughs> liberland feel free to stay I'm by the way sorry. guys if you want to stay and yeah. uh, hear from gregor <laughs> I still had a question, uh, by the way, the, oh. yeah, the, about this uh, tip Bitcoin Cash. Do do you know if it's coming back or that there are people working on it or? Uh, because Not that I've could... heard. Oh, because I, I really I miss know, it. I, yeah, I've seen a couple of guys that do still have pages there. Like I've sent uh, a few people some BCH, even fairly recently, like certainly in the last month. So it must still be like somewhat around but i yeah i i'm not i don't know any info on them sticking around and so yeah i would tend to a pessimistic <laughs> view yeah, or maybe there's an active. alternative uh service you know like uh maybe with dash or with uh also with bitcoin cash or other coin yeah that's a, a service to tip uh, streamers during uh, the live stream We've got, well, I mean, of course, you can always just uh, put up a QR code on the screen. That's the simplest way. But if you want to be triggering alerts and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, for then, triggering yeah, alerts. Yeah, more, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. More, uh, going to need something more heavy duty than that. So, yeah, I don't yeah. really have, like, we had some on our stream for a while. I would, uh, I can put you in touch with my producer. And maybe he knows how we did it because we. <laughs> we had we had it somehow. Then we switched it off because it would always be like in the middle of the conversation, and then like yeah, ding, yeah, yeah. and then like someone's like random thought. We're like, oh, this is interrupting too much. So we uh, switched it off. But uh, yeah, we miss uh, snack bar at Hookia <laughs> uh, for the for our own streamers. <laughs> it was a uh, snack bar that also was uh, making Jet saying uh, cat brain as well too. So the BCH community now has this thing. You can look up cash, oh, cash yeah. rain, and it's kind of like it's a bit, it's a bit different, and it's uh, it's still sort of in beta. But it's this thing that Kim.com has oh. made this project where it lets you send like mass BCH airdrops to people who follow your content. Okay. So on the page, they can go on, and to be honest, there is a lot of bots, so be aware of that. But it's like yeah. you go on there and maybe you set a bounty of like you know ten dollars or something and then the timer counts down and then at the end of that everyone who's followed your stream like maybe one for twitch one for youtube they all go into a big like lottery and then a bunch of them get paid out your bch so oh, honestly yeah, my... it, it can be a bit spammy but it's kind of fun as well <laughs> i did yeah, it yeah, on yeah. my discord channel i had like 200 of them joining in in, in a couple hours so that was that was useful but um like you said i do believe there was a lot of bot activity there because i they, i don't really get responses on my post but uh yeah it's it's nice to get some 
activity. The people that were already in my Discord channel were like, what's going on? What happened? <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. <laughs> kind of exploded from that. Yeah. Guys, is there something else you would like to share with our community? Is there something we missed? No, it sounds, you know, I think uh, 2024 is going to be a great year. Like, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm optimistic. I'm a pretty optimistic person. And I think uh, even though crypto has a lot of disasters, a lot of fake narratives, I think uh -huh. the truth is the truth is winning. Time is, they say, um, lies have speed, but the truth has endurance. So I'm feeling yeah. good. Feeling good. Right. We're going to make some more progress 2024. All right. Yeah. Well, I think I think oh. Oh, what's this? You hear the weird noise? Let's try again. Oh, so I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure that I'm not going to be sick. I just wanted to make sure that I'm not going to be sick. So it's always a good idea to get out, 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 Mm, I, kind of digest, see, yeah. I could kind of digest it. Thanks for I, yeah. it's nice to get out of our bubble, is what I got yeah. to digest. With it. people with the same principles, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so um feel free to stay.